Welcome in everybody to the Mountaineers Now Post Game Show. I'm Scott Italian. Joined with me live from the WVU Coliseum is Christopher Hall. West Virginia winners 85 to 67 over Oklahoma State. They get their revenge from their earlier season loss. And let's go ahead and jump right into the numbers. Eric Stevenson lighting it up once again 23 points, five of six from beyond three point range. Trey Mitchell setting a new season high with 22 points and eight of 15 shooting. Bryce Thompson had an injury towards the end of the game, but had a nice uh, day for the Oklahoma State Cowboys, posting 14, 3, and 2. For West Virginia, as a team, they shot 20 to 24 from the free throw line and a much better performance on the glass, grabbing 39 rebounds, several of those coming on the offensive end. So, Chris, this is exactly what we talked about. West Virginia had to bounce back in a big way, and they did so winning this one by 18 points. Now, this by no means puts them – firmly into the NCAA tournament field, but you got to feel like this one was a must have for West Virginia. And you can say they checked that one off the box and, and now they got to head out to the Lawrence, Kansas here this Saturday. Yeah, they did what they were supposed to do. Congrats. <laughs> uh, still a little salty over Saturday. Um, you couldn't allow that to happen in February. And uh, yeah, they responded. Uh, they responded before when they've been, when, when their backs have been against the wall, but um, you still have two big road games ahead of them and you finish off with Kansas State and you really got to still, you know, my, my thought was six conference wins would probably get you in. Um, but that loss to Texas Tech at home hits different um, than, than what, than, you know, losing to them on the road uh, and picking it up here. It's just different. So in the quad, how the quadrants are set up are much different as well. So uh, it's just, it's a completely different. Uh, different scenario now so um, and, and it's not that it's these two big games are looming you're playing Kansas which already uh, pounded you at home and an Iowa State team uh, that's going to be looking for blood after uh, they lost here so um, and then West Virginia has a third well there so yes they played well tonight um, but I would say probably Oklahoma State played worse uh, than West Virginia just playing better uh, they were obviously out with Avery Anderson um, and he's someone that's kind of like a glue guy that could, uh, a steady hand uh, when things were kind of going wrong for them. So uh, missing him hurt them. Uh, but, you know, injuries are a part of the game and they took advantage of it. They, they hit their shots here all the time. They miss shots, they miss shots. Uh, they made shots tonight, mentioned Stevenson 23. I think uh, really so, uh, the bright spot is what you want to see is from Trey Mitchell. Um, he, he scores a season high. Uh, I think you know all of his buckets were either at the line or from within three-point range, um, and we know he's capable of hitting from three. So both of those, you know, having him come come together like that, maybe towards the end of the year, um, you want to kind of see him stack some games together before they head to postseason. But it's definitely a bright spot, uh, as much as he struggled as of late. Yeah, the, the really the difference in this one, uh, or at least the one at the part of the game that got West Virginia that separation was at 16 to overrun, where Oklahoma State just couldn't buy a shot. They went seven, nearly seven minutes, uh, a scoring drought there for for them in the first half. Ten uh, minutes. It was a ten minute scoring drought. It oh. was like a ten. Uh, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it went on. That, it went on. That that was really the biggest difference in this game, and really after that that little or that big run from West Virginia, they were able to kind of keep that fifteen to twenty point stiff arm from that point on. What I really liked about tonight's effort was the defensive end. It seemed like they were really playing hard. They were communicating for the most part. They were rotating fairly well. Um, you see guys taking a lot of charges, taking uh, you know helping off uh, ball screens and stuff like that. They just I felt like this was one of their better defensive games. At least in Big Twelve. Yeah, for sure. You know they have a trio of guards that's led them on three point shooting in Big Twelve play. I mean they've been just knocking them down. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's a great defensive effort. That's that's something that they've improved on. We remember early in the year during that five game skid, seems like everyone was getting a free shot from behind the behind the arc. So yeah, I mean they, they've improved in areas, but you know their shortcomings still are. They don't really have a go-to score when things are getting tough. Uh, someone that can, you know, a Trey Mitchell, what you can see tonight, take some one-on-one -on -one and get an easy look. Uh, Bell's kind of been that guy at times, and you've gotten some big shots here and there from guards, but, you know, it, the consistency just hasn't been there. Uh, they just haven't had any consistency at all. So, so they kind of find that, and any of those guys are capable of maybe just, uh, you know, Stevenson 30-point day uh, can kind of overcome that. 
uh, as long as he doesn't get a score in about five minutes. You know, maybe that's just the rarity. Uh, but, you know, come down to crunch time. We all know these games in March come down to final five minutes. And uh, that's really been their bugaboo all season long is just five final five minutes. And didn't really get tested there tonight. Uh, Oklahoma State did dwindle it down to 13. Kind of captured my man, but what can you jump right back? So uh, kudos there too, but uh, still a long way to go. <laughs> a very long way to go. Absolutely. And I mean, you got a lot of opportunities coming up. And I know people can look at the schedule and say three ranked opponents, two are two of which are on the road. And you're looking at this like, well, this isn't setting up well for West Virginia to get into the tournament. But like you said, if you can just steal one of these upcoming two road games, which is probably going to have to be the Iowa State one, they can steal that Iowa State game and come back home and win. I, I don't think there's a question about it. They're probably in the tournament. Uh, but if you go 0-2, that's going to make that Kansas State game, again, another must-win game, and then you're probably going to have to do something in the Big 12 Conference Tournament. West Virginia has yet to win at Paul Gallon Fieldhouse since joining the Big 12. I know there's been a lot better teams, a lot more talented teams, more experienced teams that Bob Hopkins has had here at West Virginia. But what can this team do to go on the road and be the one, the first one to get a win? Uh, they'll have to play perfect. <laughs> they, will have to, they will have to make shots. Uh, at an amazing clip. Kansas is playing really well. I think they just fell uh, the other day, though, which, you know, life in the Big 12 is oh, what it is. Um, but Kansas is playing really well. Um, yeah, they're going to have to play lights out, uh, better, an even better defensive effort tonight. Um, you're going to have to do nearly everything perfect, and they have not shown that once this year. So, uh, hey, if it's the time to actually put it all together, uh, this would be it. But um, they do have a little extra time to prepare. Huggins said, um, yeah, they'll get extra rest, and, yes, they'll get extra time to prepare for Kansas. But uh, yeah, if you look at Jimmy Bell right now, he's exhausted. Uh, he's oh, just getting yeah. been beat up all season. These guys are beat up. Uh, they're going to have a lot of time off. I can say he's going to give them some time off. They're not going to go that hard so they can get their legs back. So uh, we'll see how they respond. But, yeah, it's going. It's probably going to be a rough road trip yet again. Yeah, so they do have a few days off here. West Virginia ends the season going on Monday to Saturday, then another Monday to Saturday turnaround. So uh, they will have a chance to get their legs fresh for this road trip. Again, West Virginia's never won out in Fog Allen Fieldhouse, but this would be one hell of a time to do so. So – West Virginia beating Oklahoma State 85 to 67 and move to 16 and 12 on the season, 5 and 10 in Big 12 play. They'll catch up with Kansas on Saturday at 4 o'clock. That one will be televised on ESPN. We'll be here for the Mountaineers now post game show for that as well. So for Christopher Hall, I'm Scott and Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube at Mountaineers Now and follow us on Twitter at Mountaineers Now. See you guys Saturday.